Now, Honorable Minister, what is the official stance of government regarding social media in Zimbabwe? Uh, I think the official stance uh, I have uh, said it before is that social media is a very important tool for development and that we must promote the use of social media, but we must also promote the responsible use of social media. I think that uh, the majority of Zimbabweans use social media for positive good in development, in business, in exchanging ideas and sharing information. Uh, just a fraction, a tiny fraction, use it for abusive purposes. And what we would like to do as government is to discourage that minority few who abuse social media so that they don't spoil it for the majority of Zimbabweans who use it positively. Honorable Minister, what uh, constitutes abuse of social media? I think that when you talk about abuse, uh, we are talking about uh, things that uh, undermine the rights of others, things that incite violence, things that are uh, 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 illegal in, uh, in, in the context of our country's laws, pornography, uh, stuff like that. I think that is abuse of social media. Uh, stuff that you cannot publish in a newspaper like the Herald, the Newsday, or the Daily News. Uh, that stuff finds its way on social media. The fact that it cannot be published in some of these uh, uh, traditional organizations it means it is not uh, 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 correct to publish. And, and therefore, uh, we, we discourage the use of uh, uh, social media for those negative uh, uh, purposes. Um, just to jump in there, Honorable Minister, when you use examples of content that the Daily News doesn't publish or the Herald doesn't publish, isn't that because they've got editorial policies to follow, they've got gatekeeping mechanisms in place? Isn't that the fact that Internet then gives people the right to express their views without having them curtailed or filtered through gatekeeping or filtered through editorial policies? So I, I, I don't see where the problem is in terms of... I actually also don't see where the problem is in terms of the use of social media. Uh, what I'm saying is that we don't want to gatekeep anyone who wants to use social media. But what we want to discourage is the use of this social media to do things that undermine the integrity of our society. I don't believe, Delta, that it is your argument that we must allow child pornography to be circulated through the social media. Uh, and those are the things that I'm saying we don't want. Uh, we're saying people must be free to use social media and they must be free to publish whatever they want as long as they don't break the law. And that's what we're saying. Okay, I, I feel like you're straw meaning me. I, I certainly wouldn't uh, support uh, child <laughs> pornography. But my, my issue here is that the way in which this uh, narrative has been brought to the public around regulating social media has been brought in a way that instills fear that... Um, is very imprecise because there's no clarity around what's happening. You wake up one random morning and there's a notice from Portra, a very strongly worded notice without context, without nuance. So it's very open to interpretation. You get the impression that um, conduct on social media um, will be deemed criminal at the discretion of the government. No, I think that it is wrong for you to make that interpretation. And I think that uh, we have to be fair to government. We have to be fair to Portra as the regulator. Uh, there is a law in this country which regulates the use of telecommunications uh, uh, services. And that law uh, deems certain things illegal if you do them using the platform, uh, the platforms that are regulated by Potras. Therefore, I think when Potras uh, advises the public, which is their responsibility to do so, by the way, advises the public against doing certain things that are outside the law, it is actually doing its duty. The, the most important thing is that we don't want to wake up and be arresting everyone for doing illegal things. Because our Zimbabweans are not all educated in terms of the law to know what each and every law says, we must always be uh, advising them that when you go beyond this line, you are actually now breaking the law. And it's, Im it's important that uh, the regulator does so. And I must make it very clear. I don't know where you are getting this idea that the government is working up with some regulations to regulate social media. I think what the government has said is that we need to be careful how we use social media and not put the government in a position where it requires to regulate the media. 
the social media. We have had social media for many years in this country. You must ask yourself, why has government not regulated it? Because we think that it is good for development. Because we think that it is positive to have such kind of platforms that allow individuals to express themselves. But what we don't want is to have some individuals use this social media to incite violence, to uh, uh, undermine the, uh, 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 the integrity of other people. Delta, if you have a relationship with your boyfriend and the relationship ends, but in, during the time of your relationship, you are sending each other nude pictures. If your boyfriend posts those nude pictures, we think it's wrong. And we think that is not uh, social media should be used for. It must not be for revenge pornography. We must block those things. All right. So how are you dealing with such a scenario, Honorable Minister? I understand that uh, this afternoon there was a, a women's organization that uh, went before uh, the Parliamentary Portfolio Committee on uh, Legal uh, Justice, Legal and Parla and um, <laughs> sorry, I beg your pardon, mm. on uh, legal justice and uh, parliamentary issues, and they were lobbying for a law that protects uh, women against uh, that uh, revenge uh, pornography. That's exactly what and we are talking they feel about. That the current laws do not protect such uh, cases. So what are you doing to protect women or even men against revenge pornography? I think that revenge pornography is just one of the aspects of abuse of social media. There are many others. Um, I, I want to give reference to the recent uh, demonstrations. Uh, and what came out clearly was that uh, there were individuals who were advocating for chaos, violence, uh, inciting basically violence to the extent of circulating uh, cocktails on how to make petrol bombs. And we think that that is uh, not the way to use social media. So our view is that uh, Zimbabweans, first of all, are responsible for the good use of social media. The Zimbabweans are responsible for making sure that government does not have to intervene. And the way they must carry out that responsibility is by using social media for the many things that they need for, except to incite violence, to uh, uh, advocate hate speech, uh, to maliciously injure other people's reputations. As long as they are not doing that, there is absolutely no need for government to intervene by putting together regulations. However, on the other hand, we have a responsibility as government to make sure that there are laws that uh, protect uh, the majority of Zimbabweans who use social media uh, uh, positively. We have laws that relate to the use of social media, to the use of the internet, to the use of e-transactions that have not yet gone through uh, parliament. Uh, the cyber security bill is currently being discussed and the input is being obtained from various interest groups. We have the e-transaction bill that is being worked on. Again, input being obtained from various groups. These uh, uh, bills, once passed into parliament and signed by the president, they become law, should help to regulate the use of uh, electronic media, electronic uh, transactions in terms of uh, e-commerce and and. and, and and issues to do with uh, uh, the circulation of pornography, uh, pornography and pornographic material using uh, platforms like WhatsApp, Twitter and others. All right, our time is uh, 27 minutes after 8 o'clock and uh, this is The Hub on uh, Star FM. The program is a Spotlight, a news and uh, current affairs uh, production. And uh, tonight on the program we have ICT Postal and Korea Services Minister Superman Diwanzira and uh, we're discussing our uh, social media and all other things to do with his portfolio. You can take a part in this discussion via WhatsApp. The number is uh, 0771897897. The studio phone lines 0772 one six two six five one or six six zero two nine nine six six zero eight nine seven Harare numbers and uh, some of the messages that have come through on uh, WhatsApp and the uh, can the minister elaborate to us and uh, someone says uh, abusing social media and was really wrong and uh, someone says uh, how is social media being abused and uh, yeah WhatsApp really is a wash okay let, let me just uh, very quickly uh, tell you how it is being abused I um, received a lot of complaints from Zimbabweans who received WhatsApp messages from uh, some Zimbabweans when uh, there was a call to stay away.
some of the messages that people got included uh, instructions on how to make patrol bombs and go and bomb supermarkets and petrol stations and police stations. I think that is abuse. We are a peace-loving nation. Zimbabweans don't like violence. Zimbabwe is known as the most peaceful and stable country on the African continent. And globally, we are renowned for that stability. Now, if you have people who advocate for the use of this kind of uh, violence against either the police, supermarkets, innocent people, I think that is the highest level of abuse of social media. And as responsible citizens, we must say that is unacceptable. And as a government, we have a responsibility to make sure that kind of stuff is not perpetrated. Okay, um, I'm noticing, Minister, that a lot of your points um, are aligned to um, social interest, human interest aspects of, of abuse that we all can agree on. What about the more controversial stuff, the things that people get emotive about? So when we're talking about restricting and positively using social media, where is the place for freedom of expression in terms of political views? Uh, I think that uh, uh, there is a tendency to think that uh, when government says, well, we may be forced to regulate, they are talking about we don't want you to criticize uh, the president or to criticize ministers. No. In fact, we like criticism. This country will not develop if we in the leadership do not accept criticism, constructive criticism. This country will not develop if we allow people to boil with anger while they have no platform to express that anger. So we encourage this kind of engagement. When we talk about regulating, it is these kind of things I have just explained that we actually don't like. We have had many years of newspapers that are regarded in government circles as opposition newspapers have they ever been closed no they continue to publish so why should we be bothered by an individual sitting somewhere in mabuku who doesn't like superman duanzira or who doesn't like what superman duanzira in his capacity as a government minister that person has a right to express his views and criticize the minister and the minister must listen to that person in mabuku but what we are saying is Let's not encourage chaos in our country by then accepting that the people who post uh, on social media how to make uh, petrol bombs and go and bomb uh, police stations in Zimbabwe and supermarkets, I have a right to do so. They actually don't. Okay, thank you for raising that, uh, Minister. Um, you know, the Banjo's Declaration of Principles of Freedom of Expression has got several benchmarks, but there's one benchmark that I feel is very... Um, apt for the conversation we're having. It reads, no one shall be found liable for true statements, opinions, or statements regarding public figures which it was reasonable to make in the circumstances. I agree, and this government that, uh, subscribes to that. We actually agree that uh, no one should be liable for saying uh, 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 no to corruption. No to corruption. Yeah, no to corruption, or uh, the ministers uh, are not doing their job, or that minister is uh, is dead wood. Nobody should be stopped from saying that. So However, how you explain even more you're getting arrested for saying this very same thing. No, I think that uh, uh, you want to drag me into a conversation that you should be inviting the Minister of Home Affairs or the Police Chief. Okay. I'm neither of those two. I'm here to talk about uh, issues related to the use of social media, ICT, and that's my space. I'm not a super minister. My name may be Superman Duanza, yeah. but I stick to my right, territory. Our time is uh, 28 minutes before 9 o'clock, and uh, someone comes through on WhatsApp, Honorable Minister, saying, how do you separate constructive criticism from any other criticism? We use the laws. The constitution of the country is very clear. Uh, Section 61 of uh, the constitution of Zimbabwe talks about freedom of expression and freedom of the media. We believe that social media is a media. So uh, every person's rights are enshrined in there. Uh, and, and anyone who is interested in understanding, uh, especially the one who has just asked that question, must read Section 61 of, uh, of, of our Constitution. But it is also important that after reading uh, uh, Section 61, they must pay more attention to uh, Section 61, subsection 5 which says that the freedom of expression 
and the freedom of the media exclude the following incitement to violence advocates of hatred or hate speech malicious injury to a person's reputation or dignity or malicious or unwarranted breach of a person's right to privacy so as long as you are playing in the social media and you are aware of what freedom of expression is not in the context of our constitution you have no problem all right, and Honorable Minister, you talked about uh, the e-transaction bill and uh, the cyber crimes bill. When will we see them being uh, tabled before Parliament? It's a, it's a process. Uh, what I can tell you right now is that there are very active consultations that are taking place. Uh, when those consultations are finished, and by the way, all Zimbabweans have a right to contribute to those laws, including NGOs that are very active in this uh, kind of space. How they may the ordinary Zimbabwean contribute in those consultations? Well, the ordinary Zimbabweans choose a member of parliament at the end of the day. They must go through their member of parliament so that that input, if it is not captured in this current process, it is captured when the bill goes to parliament and the, those things can be included. But there are also outreach programs where uh, uh, interest groups, individuals are encouraged to submit their contributions and writing on what should actually be addressed. And you mentioned earlier on that uh, there was a group of women in parliament calling for the uh, 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 for laws that protect women to be, uh, 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 to be put in place. And I think that's part of the consultation process that, that, that takes place. Uh, we hope that before the end of the year, these, these laws should have gone through the processes of uh, uh, cabinet and be introduced in, in parliament. Once they are in parliament, uh, we have no control over the process. It becomes a parliamentary process. Hi, Minister. Earlier I misdirected myself and I addressed questions to you that you feel are not within your pelvic. But I have this one. Regarding the claim that you you threatened to remove someone from Twitter, is that is that under your purview? <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's a, that's a very classic case of the abuse of social media. I have been uh, uh, denigrated. I've been attacked on social media that I have claimed that I can remove somebody from social media or that I can remove somebody from Twitter. It's ridiculous. Number one, that uh, incident is quoted which is quoted, is actually recorded on video. And people, if they care to listen to the conversation that I had with Pastor Ivan Mawariri, there was no mention whatsoever of removing him on Twitter. In fact, the conversation was, Pastor Ivan, I know you personally. We met two weeks ago. I have met you on several occasions. I have donated chairs to your church. You have never invited me to say, you know what, my congregants have things or a born to chew with government. Come and listen to them and take these issues up. I met you two weeks ago at Avondale. You didn't raise the issues you are raising. I've seen you at Professor Jonathan Moyo's daughter's wedding where you were glowingly speaking about the president and even imitating how he speaks. You have never engaged Professor Moyo about these issues that you are raising on Twitter. For me, it doesn't give me an impression that you are serious about addressing issues except you want some Twitter fame. So if you try to engage me on Twitter, I will not take you seriously. I will dismiss you because I won't take you seriously because you have access to me. But if it's somebody who's sitting in London, who's sitting in South Africa, who's sitting in Mabuku, because they hardly have that access, I can take them seriously if they post their views on Twitter. But for you, Pastor Ivan, I can't. I will dismiss you. Now, I was quoted in a newspaper saying I said I will dismiss somebody on Twitter. I want to tell you that my lawyers are actually taking action against that newspaper. And they will have to produce the evidence or they will have to pay me for lying. I'm an ICT minister. My job is to promote massive use of ICTs, not to take people away from ICTs. They actually don't understand my role if people make that conclusion. Okay. Um, minister, how would you respond to the view that you are an amateur bully who steals money from parastatals? I've just seen that on Twitter. Again, it's, uh, Zimbabweans have this license to say anything they want on Twitter, and I welcome it. Uh, but they must provide evidence that I'm a bully, that's number one. Number two, that I steal money from parastatals. I think that we must produce evidence, because since I was born, since I was born, I've never stolen a cent from anybody, including a parastatal. There's been stories going on that I took $200,000 uh, and I drive a $200,000 car. What nonsense. 
I don't okay. drive a two hundred thousand dollar car. What, what is your relation with us? Uh, your relationship with Sia Kurima or Bopiela is as known, who is uh, peddling such uh, allegations. Okay, I'm going to come back to that question, but I want to deal with this two hundred thousand dollar issue that I drive a two hundred thousand dollar car. Number one, that is nonsense. I don't drive a two hundred thousand dollar car. Number two, they say I borrowed money from a parastatal in order to buy myself a car. I don't own a car in my name. I don't drive a car in my name. The car that I drive was bought by CMED. It's owned by CMED, registered to CMED. It's a government car. I don't, I don't own it. I've never borrowed money to, to, for, pe for personal use from anybody, neither for ministerial use from anybody. If CMED gets money from a parastatal to buy a condition of service vehicle for a minister, that's for CMED, which is 100% owned by government, to respond to. So this issue that I drive a $200,000 car is nonsense. I don't drive a $200,000 car. I didn't buy a $200,000 car. I didn't borrow money from anybody for a $200,000 car. So I right, hope, thank you very I much hope those who say so, I hope those who say so, and if they continue to say so publicly, will be able to defend themselves in court. All right, our Next time thing. is uh, 20 minutes before 9 o'clock, and uh, this is a Spotlight, a news and a current affairs production on uh, Star FM. Tonight we have ICT, Postal and Career Services Minister, Superman Diwanzira. And uh, to help us with this discussion, I'm also joined by Zim Papers, Head of Digital, Delta Milando. To take part, you can come through, listeners, on WhatsApp number 0771897897, or use Harare numbers 04602996. 0897. I'll be opening the phone lines in just a moment. And as uh, someone comes through on WhatsApp, I'd like to thank Honorable Minister about his words of encouraging peace in the country. This is from Chakwana in Mavuku. And uh, a lot of messages are coming through. And uh, someone says, uh, how is government going to regulate the use of social media? Is it not going to be contrary to the aspect of maintaining privacy? I think the minister has touched on that. Let me, let me actually quickly touch on that because I think that it's very important when people hear that government wants to regulate social media, there is nothing unusual about regulating anything because government already regulates a lot of things, including newspapers. Nobody publishes a newspaper in this country without a license. No journalist operates in this country without being accredited by, uh, uh, by government. Therefore, if people say they want to regulate social media, it's not a train smash. But at this point, we have no plan to regulate social media. So people must relax. What will force government to regulate social media is continued abuse of that social media. And I have highlighted what our constitution says. I take an oath of office to defend this constitution. So if anyone using social media undermines this constitution, they have an issue with me. They have an issue with the government, and we must deal with it. Then, before you take up another question, I know Delta wants to ask me very quickly. You ask me, Masia Kulima, I don't want anyone to think that I, 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 I avoided that question. You said, what's my relationship with him? I have no relationship with him. But it's important for you to know that when I, uh, 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 in the course of my, my duties, I authorized that Net One conduct a forensic audit after several... A potentially corrupt transactions were unearthed by a newly appointed finance director. Some of those transactions related to a company called Bopela. And that company, it's my understanding, that is owned by one Mr. Agrippa Masia Kurima. Uh, and those transactions which were deemed or suspected to be corrupt are subject of a forensic audit by the Comptroller and Auditor General of this country. And she has hired PWC to do that forensic audit. And because Mr. Masia Kurisma's company is under investigation, I understand that he has been uh, making all sorts of wild allegations. I've chosen not to respond to them because I know that they are being uh, influenced by a forensic audit. I have said, and, and I might say now, let's wait for the result of the forensic audit. We will see whose hands are clean.
Uh, some messages coming through on WhatsApp. Um, Taura, a new minister, Kuno Taito Chika Kufamba Ninyezi Kunye Padzipa WhatsApp. And someone says, uh, minister, Mr. Minister, don't be emotional. And uh, someone says, uh, <laughs> Super, you are a star, the most hardworking and honest minister. Thank you. And uh, someone says, Okay, the same questions. How are people abusing social minister? Yes, Delta. Okay, I wanted to talk about um, the idea of policing, monitoring. If you put in regula- um, laws to regulate uh, social media, for example, how are you going to enforce them? Will there be a, a case of uh, our people being tabbed? I, just, I, <laughs> I are don't you going understand. To check down our IP addresses. How no. exactly do you intend to enforce this, and how will uh, you identify or authenticate identities? Because people impersonate other people. They are spoof accounts. They are fake accounts. They are hoaxes. They are. Who can say that? Accounts, yeah, yeah. You, you can say that when so, you actually talk. So of, how are you going to pin it on me, Minister? Uh, okay, you only say talk of spoof accounts. Yeah. I I was quoted in some spoof website which says that I said the two hundred thousand dollars is peanuts and everybody's believing it you know that story should be believed only on april fool's day uh, but unfortunately you know uh, uh, some 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 people sitting out there want to make zimbabweans fools all the time i never said that i never met anybody or in, be interviewed by somebody and that's exactly the point you've raised that how how if at all there's going to be regulation are we going to pick on who is doing what and who is doing what i think it is important for me to emphasize again that the government does not have an immediate intention to regulate social media. But are the, the bills that you have talked about, are they not a way of regulating social media? No, they are way, no, they are way, they are way, they are a way of protecting those who use, who use uh, e everything. Whether you are transacting online, how do you protect your credit card details? Uh, when when you have bought something and the online, cyber crimes bill is it not a way of regulating? Cyber crime, yes. Cyber crime includes uh, people who are stealing using your credit card online. So don't be afraid of things that are meant to make life good for you. No, we are not afraid. We want clarity. Yeah, no, we will give you clarity, and 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 I'm very happy to come back again and discuss specifically the cyber security bill. But I think Delta asked a question that I hadn't finished responding to. Uh, and I, I said I want to emphasize again, it's not the government's immediate intention to regulate social media. I think that the people who must regulate social media are its users. When you see as a user of social media somebody abusing it and sending you child pornography, report them to the police. And that's how we're going to deal with those kind of people. Because there are laws that already deal with that. So Zimbabweans must take responsibility to protect their good use of social media. Don't allow people who incite violence to be circulating that material to you. When you receive something propagating violence, report to the police because you are protecting your right to use social media without interference. All right. Uh, then, then, no, no, let me, let me deal with the next point uh, that Delta raised and said how, if at all... The Act. That Interception of Communications Act allows for the interceptions of communication in this country for security purposes. But that act is not administered by the Minister of ICT. It's administered by the Minister of State Security. So there's a difference there. And the Zimbabweans are oblivious. They don't know that these things actually... And I'm surprised that very serious organizations don't even know that there's a law which was approved under Minister Chamisa to deal with interception. And I think that it's also important that Zimbabweans must never fool themselves, especially, I mean, the bad apples that use social media, must never fool themselves that they cannot be found. Every item you use is an address. Even your phone has an address. And message can be tracked back to the cell phone that sent it. Because each cell phone has an ID. And uh, there are so many other ways to track. This is technology. We didn't develop it. So people must not hide behind technology and think they are smart. They are not smart because the people who made the cell phones are smarter to make sure that they deal with those that want to abuse the use of such useful good tools. Okay. The minister has had so much time to speak. So I'm <laughs> I Okay. Let me give you a chance. <laughs> 
Okay, the first issue I want to raise is the issue of what I feel like is a paternalistic approach to, in terms of framing these laws because you're basically saying we're going to sit down as elected members of parliament and make these decisions because you elected us. But if we're going to talk about social media, why not crowdsource? Why not open up this discussion to the people that actually use social media? Because it's a conversation that likely MPs did not campaign around or have discussions about. So there's no way they can truly represent the, the views and opinions of individuals. So why not crowdsource? But and the other issues... Okay, quickly, is, before we yes, go to the other issues, let, let me say, Delta, we have no intention to regulate social media. So we cannot be consulting people about things we don't want to do. When it comes to the uh, uh, consultation, if the need arises that we must regulate social media, trust me, we will ask you, we will ask Zimbabweans how they think we should protect them. But it, there's no intention to do so. So why should we be out there looking for things that we are not doing? This is the hype that is being created in the, in the, in the, in the, uh, 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 in the social media space by people with an agenda who want this government to look terrible, who want the ministry to look like it doesn't know what it is doing. Please forgive us uh, 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 we don't uh, have that intention all right and yeah. the message coming through on whatsapp and that's a question for the security but i think it's now well known that about our time okay. is uh, 11 minutes before nine o'clock and uh, this is a spotlight a news and current affairs production right here on star fm tonight we've got ict postal and career services minister super mandi wanzira and we're also joined by zim papers head of digital delta milayan do and uh, you can come through on our whatsapp number zero seven seven one eight nine seven eight nine seven and uh, we will take some callers now star fm good evening star fm hello Hello? Yes, you threw to staff and go ahead with your contribution. Murdango tienda ni mashokwao. Murdango tienda ni I want to know the Hello, yes, you threw to staff and go ahead. Hello, I just want to blend with the minister. Where you say Okay. I said I want to thank the minister. Very much. Thank you, Mr. Mandwanto. For saying the government must listen to criticism so that they must correct all their mistakes. Thank you for that. All right. No, thank you very much. We are not experts in everything. Saka, it's important to tell you that you are not a normal man. 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 Let's listen to everyone. Let's rally behind everyone. And then we can create something better for our country. Stephen, good evening. Stephen, hello. Stephen, good evening. Stephen, hello. Stephen, hello. Hello. Yes, you're through to Stephen. Go ahead with your contribution. Yeah, Ghana Super GT uh, criticism is right. Why is it Ivan Mawari did buy the interview in Arusenigo after the interview? Agatanga Kumutuka, I think he must be clarified on the road. Thank you. I actually thought I had already clarified, but I must thank him for raising that point. Uh, I think the listener must know that uh, I'm the founder of a radio station called ZFM. If I was negative to criticism or that government must not be criticized, I could have blocked him not being on that radio station using my previous power as a founder. But uh, that didn't happen. So that's not point number one. The next point is that uh, issues must be debated at individual level or on radio. What happened after the interview is that I bumped into Pastor Ivan. He came to greet me and I had a very uh, a heated discussion with him. And I said, no, Pastor Ivan, I know you personally. You are not like somebody I don't know. I am the one who donated your first chairs when you were starting your own church because I support enterprises, I support initiatives by our own people. And therefore, you have access to me as a government minister. And if you want access to other government ministers, I'm very happy to facilitate. But each time I've met you, you have always said things are okay. How come you want then to attack government ministers and yet you see me uh, if you have an issue raise it with me but 
if you start raising these issues on social media ndongo fungwa tu wakuda kungu itambiri ya kosa pastor ivan kwete mbiri ya kutu udakuwa adresa jini that right. is the argument i had with him okay let's take our last two callers star fm good evening hello hello yes you through to star fm go ahead with your contribution masipa ya nyanzate wama ndi wanzira jino tenda ni mashukwe nyo akanaka chose inishuti chikura taita uri wakuni batu rinu tonga rinu sevaifa ni jino taurwa ni ni opposition tinufunga mta zaatawa na opposition ndo zwa zimetu saka iyo jino maa zimbabwe ntaku uchwa wama ndi wanzira kutika natini kuona kuti wama ndi wanzira aa wo wari kufamba wari kuenda ma polisi zawa wari kuitari aa kuno tipinza mgoronga kutitisha wata ulira hatisha kwa nisa kutiti wata ulira wama ndi wanzira mkozi kilinge taa kusha kuti mangwana jino ya tika pisi kwa mgoronga todi na aswezo zo wama ndi wanzira tilenge tichukuona ya kutu wama ndi wanzira polisi ya wama ndi wanzira polisi ya wama ndi wanzira polisi ya kutitua korete tosha kupisi kwa mrongo todi mvunzo wakana kama vyo itanu baba musashe ba kutaura ni ma minister musashe kutaura ni ma mp ndi maka wafotera kana wasi liku uya kuma constituents kwenye mwa taura kuti ii mwita kaku votera ya ii juja haku iti katiti kujidaba ii minu wada izei mwudi you it's your right as a voter kuma ministry muka ita appointment kutitida kuona minister kashoma kutadza kumuona mungango tadza kuona one or two kuno nukuti wano nita kuona ka nukuti wari bizine mabasa but kune ma officials who should be ready to meet you and i am one minister who is easily accessible ma email ma minister anu wani kwa pa ma website motu mbila masho kwenye muda kusita ashike kuma minister yayo muno vumi wa kunyoro wa uma pepa kutaura kuti ma opinion zedu ma view zedu ni ma police ariku ituwa ni urumende nde ay ay dae urumende ya mbore gira kuita iji ya ita iji nukuti ma idea za kanaka haa viku urumende badzi ano baku ne wano waka ita semi muru kuterera nda wandini muno ona jimu jeti singa oniba saka hakuna hiku kanyi kange nyu rusunu nkwa aruna kurira ma minister baru waka ura imini kunyanya ma ministers ma servants enyu they are not ma bosses enyu handi wekuti kumuna mate ba ma minister ma minister hafana kuna mata imini ne kutundi imini makawa isa ipapo alright delta ok i just want to quickly mention this because the minister has been reiterating it to say kuti evan mawari should have spoken to him first but people in your social circle don't necessarily have to look at you or interact with you in your institutional capacity so it doesn't matter whether you met him in social settings his instinct would not be to then bombard you with questions that have to do with your office in government i think that's the the reasonable interaction i think of an I, I think i think the, the reason i mentioned this is because it, it's a question that has been asked to me twice during this program and i have just been explaining why i engaged him the way i right, did not that he was uh, supposed to just uh, simply responding to questions that i've been was asked a very heated let's take the start from good evening i think i think you have been if, if, hello Hello, yes, you're through to Star FM. Thank you. Uh, I just want to ask the minister. Go uh, ahead, he's listening. Regarding the 200,000, uh, uh, this is change. Ndofunga kana manga makaterera, eh, minister vava pindura mbunzo iwoyo. I think nika tipindura futi kuna ngwita wa mwango wa singa kwa sina kuterera. Ndofunga kana pindura kuhuzi, simoto batu ratera. Alright. Hey, hey, I, I think it's very important, let me respond. Thank you for asking it again, for the benefit of those who are not listening. There is what are called spoof websites. Uh, ideally, people should believe them only on the 1st of April, because they are fools websites. And that article came out on a fool's website. And please don't allow yourself to be made a fool by some of these spoof websites that publish those things. It's a lie. I never said so. I never spoke to that website. It's well known for publishing these spoof stories. And uh, 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 people, Zimbabweans must not be so gullible, especially on social media. And I see that it actually happens often. That somebody posts something and everybody starts believing it. Where the young girl who was accused for injecting a two-year-old with blood with HIV, and that everybody started spreading that story. Before we knew it, and our courts did a good job, the girl was not guilty of anything. So it's exactly the same thing that people say in the country, it's a small change. I never said that to anyone. In any case, I would have said, so if I had a $200,000 car, I actually don't have it. Very quickly, Minister, you took the time to throw Nelson Chamisa under the bus. 
uh, regarding the intercession. I didn't. I'm, I just stated the fact. <laughs> no, but uh, I've got a colleague on Twitter who's actually saying, no, the fact is that that bill was passed on 3 August 2007. It was not under Nelson Chamisa's watch. So just for fact-checking, can you corroborate that? Well, I, as far as I know, that it was uh, passed when Nelson Chamisa was the, the minister of ICT. So they, they, they may have to provide uh, information. This is my knowledge. Uh, but, uh, uh, of course, the minister can also be wrong. So he will double-check, I will double-check. All right. Uh, our time is uh, two minutes before 9 o'clock. And uh, this is a Spotlight, a news and current affairs production. I'll take my last call. Star FM, good evening. Hello, hi. Hello, yes, you through to Star FM. Go ahead with your contribution. Okay, um, one hour is not good enough for the minister to address our concerns. I want to ask him if he is prepared to respond to a hashtag maybe sometime this week. Maybe we say ask the minister of ICT, is he prepared to respond to our questions on Twitter? Very good idea. I'm very happy to respond to your questions on, on Twitter. I actually don't do well with abuse on Twitter. You know, I... Uh, I've tried to be very responsive to many issues that Zimbabweans raise on Twitter. But I've also uh, found that there is quite a, a, a minority group, uh, probably just sponsored, which really is about, is about abusing ministers or abusing uh, uh, officials Did by posting, by, by posting uh, uh, very uh, 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 ugly comments about fam my family, about... Uh, uh, okay, okay, Minister, but remember, these are the people in Zimbabwe, right? And we want you to respond to that. I, I said I I'm very happy you... to respond, but uh, yes, when you okay. see when you see that I'm being abused, you must also speak out. But I'm very happy to respond. You can create that hashtag. Trust me, I will, I will respond on all the issues that you would like me to respond to. But what we must discourage is people who use social media is the abuse of public officials who take their time to attend to issues that the public raises. I'm very discouraged. Each time I want to do so, I'm doing so. When you have useless people, and I'm, unfortunately I have to call them useless, who are bent on just undermining the in engagement between the public and government. All right, uh, that was uh, ICT Postal and Career Services Minister Super Mandiwanzira. And I will concur with the last caller. Uh, 50 minutes or an hour is not enough. We had so many issues, but social media took center stage. Uh, he is a very accessible minister, like he rightfully said. And I can promise our listeners we will have part two of a hashtag Minister Super Mandiwanzira. Thank you very much uh, for coming to Star FM. Thank you very much for having me. It's been a great pleasure and look forward to part two.